The following is a production of the Dallas Genealogical Society. For more information, please visit our website at www.dallasgenealogy.org. Is Lisa, you come up and introduce our speaker for this month. Today we've got Linnell Bennett Moss. She's a sixth generation Dallasite and has been researching family history since 1968. She's worked in the Plano Family History Center in various positions since 1990 and has taught family history research for over 20 years and is going to talk to us today about the Family Search Family Tree. Thank you, Linnell. So we're going to do just a little technology shift. Bear with us for a second. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Okay, I can talk in a normal voice. Sometimes these things get so loud that I have to whisper. So I can talk normally. Okay, how many of you use Family Tree? Good. Did you download the Family Tree app to your phone? We're going to do something with that later that I think you'll enjoy, so I hope you did load it. Okay, now I was asked to show a lot of things on how to, I can't, can't put that there. I'm gonna go to Family Tree. Now, you see the sign in right here. Uh, if when you sign in, I have marked it to stay signed in for two weeks. So all I have to do is click sign in. But actually, if I just go to family tree, it's going to sign me in automatically if it's within that two weeks. So I'm going to go to tree. Now, there are four trees. And I'm going to change it to landscape and it's going to wake up. Now, I am not doing death by PowerPoint today. I may be doing death by life today. Uh, but I cannot show you how to use the family tree effectively if by screen capture. Uh, this is not your tree or my tree, it is our tree. And people, I've had people email me or complain to others about, they changed my information. Well, that person has the my tree-itis, as Ron Tanner likes to call it. Uh, this is our tree, and we all contribute to the tree. It is in wiki format that as long as you're registered and signed in, you can, use, you can change the tree. Uh, okay, now this is the landscape version and right over here, we have some options. There are record hints, you see the little blue squares on there that means that there are sources for that person to be added. Uh, research suggestions, and those come up that this person may have children that are not shown. This person has no sources. Then you have data problems. Now that may be that this child was born after the mother or father was deceased or before the mother was in childbearing years, or after the mother was in childbearing years. And one of them I found last night was this was born, this child was born after the father's decease. Well, I went to check the father, and it turned out he died before he was born. <laughs> so 
He was born in 1855 and died in 1837, so I changed it to 1937, and all of those problems disappeared. And there are many things that you just hit the wrong key. Uh, but there's also data problems that this is not a standardized birth date or death date or birthplace or death place. Now, you may have entered it correctly, but when you entered it, if you didn't select the standardized location, then it's going to come up that it's not a standardized date or location. So uh, those I pretty much ignore. Then we also have portraits. Now, I do not have that clicked right now, but when I do, then the portraits appear. Now, I personally, you can put portraits on living people. I just haven't. I just kind of don't do that, although they're only seen by me. So feel free to do it. Now, you can, in the landscape, you can click marriages, which show up right here, or you can unclick it. Then there's invert colors. Now, in the landscape, I really like the inverted colors when I've got portraits because it makes them pop out more. They just seem to have more color. So now, if I go to the portrait pedigree, I also like that in the inverted color. And things change from time to time. You can extend these, if I can hold my finger still long enough. You can see that extension go up. Um, I've got three of my great-great-grandparents' pictures, and there are data problems probably because I don't have a standardized location for them. Uh, now, if we go to fan chart, that seems to add a little more color, but I don't see a whole lot of difference in that. When I go to descendancy chart, I really do not like that in inverted, but I also do not like the portraits. As you see, how few you get to see on there. If I take off the portraits, then it really, uh, you get more to the page. Now, I'm going to go back to one of my husband's ancestors, Reuben McClung. Now, if I want to, uh, I'm not going to change his name, but if I want to change his name, maybe his name was Reuben Andrew McClung, then I click on Reuben McClung, and this tells me right below who put in that information. It also tells when that information was added changed, edited. If I want to change it, I click edit. And you can see that makes it where you can change the name. And right down here, you want to give a reason why you've changed it. Now I'm going to cancel and I'm going to close it. Now, I should have said, let me go back in there. Uh, you also see right here sources that were added pertaining to his name. Okay. The same thing goes to change birth. You just click edit. Now, that one is not a standardized location. And I'm going to change that to a standardized location. And what I'm going to do, I've, well, I've got to edit. And then I'm going to take off. And you see it comes up right there. 
It is now a standardized location. Reason not change, no. Close. Okay. Is that hard? No. Okay. Now, down here we have family members, and below that we have sources. Now, you can add sources from other websites that I'm going to show you how to do that a little later. And uh, you can add sources from your source box. Uh, if you've already put in, well, this is attaching from the source box. We're gonna, I'm going to skip this. We're going to go on and do some other things. Let me see what I've got next down here. Okay. Uh, okay, edit relationships. And I've got an example on that. Oh, what did I do? I all time exit out when I don't want to tree. Now, I'm still signed in, but I also want to go to back to, I'm in the descendants, I've got to go to recents again and go down to Reuben. Now, this is a person page. We're going to go to his tree, and since we were last in descendancy, it will pick it up there. Now, this is a very short list, but if I click here, it's going to extend it out four generations. And then it's going to add sources. Now, if I go down, you see there's a lot of sources to be added. A lot. Now, as I go down, notice that here goes to the fifth generation and beyond, that there's still a lot more children added. As I, I usually work from the bottom because I extend those out further, and uh, I've gotten to the point that I've done all of the sourcing from the bottom up. Now, I want... Rosie Gathright. And you know, it's funny, but I sourced out the bottom and then I went back in to check because I'd lost where I was. And uh, there were more sources to add. Indexing goes on day after day and new sources get added day after day. So you can keep going back over and over and have more sourcing. Now here's Rosie Gathright. And she has, she's on the 1900 census. I'm going to attach a census. We're gonna adjust relationships from another one. But right here, I've scrolled down. I'm going to review and attach. Now, it just so happens that there is, you see, everybody is matched up here, except for this one person down here, and it's mother-in-law. Can we possibly add that mother-in-law while we're doing the rest of the family? We can. But first of all, I'm going to put in and I put in a good source here. Source shows residents and family members in household with birth information. Now, I'm going to copy that, but I'm going to attach it to this one person. And then when I go up here to compare father, it automatically appears. And the mother. Now, the father, they couldn't read it. It's actually an M, but they couldn't read it. It's really bad writing. And I know that it's Milton Gathright. And here's Mahala. She's right. 
We're going to attach her. Now, we can attach all of the kids in the same way, but how do we get mother-in-law up there? Anybody got an idea? Well, the focus person here is Rosie. If we change the focus person to her mother, it puts the mother right up there. And you can now attach the mom. And always put that over, add that information. Sometimes it will give you birth dates or death dates. You want to always add it. And see, the children are still right there, that we can go and attach each of the children. If I can hit it right. You see the, the search, I mean the source information, why this is a good source, comes up the same for everyone. Now sometimes that reason needs to change. And on the father, I should have actually put in that his name was misindexed, that it was Mill, Mil, and uh, I didn't, but that's a good thing to do. Okay, that's one down. Now, we scroll back up here. And now we have, it'll show, show details. There are no other sources. Now, Claude M. Camp here has three sources. But if I go down here, and I click on Show Details. Now, I don't want to lose my pedigree here, and if I just click on Show Details, I'm going to lose the pedigree. So I'm going to right-click on Show Details and say Open Link and New Tab. Now, the showing there is limited to three, but Claude Camp has a few more. And he also has some research suggestions. So. Always uh, check on that if you have three showing. Do we have questions about sourcing? Yeah, I do. I do. You're, these are all sources from within Family Search? They are within Family Search. You're adding an external source. External source, okay. If you look on, I think it's on the fourth page of your handout, maybe. Third page, fourth, third page, maybe. Yes, third page. You see this little record seek right here? Now I'm, oh, quit. Come on. I've lost my family search. Let me go back in and grab Reuben again. I'm sorry, I keep dropping this. It's the same thing I do at home. <laughs> Recents, and we'll get Reuben right there. And we'll go to tree. Now, I will put that. Now, I'm going to go over here. I use ProtoPage that I can access very easily different websites. And I'm going to go to state and federal, and I'm going to go click general land office, and I'm going to search documents in Alabama for Clay, Simeon, W. Then I'm going to go down search patents. Oh, yes, there is. Okay, I will leave off. It may, he may have been in there as Simon. But it's Simeon, whatever. And we'll go down to number three.
and there, uh, do you see that spelled Simeon? Yeah. Well, I'm going to click on this part right here. And then we have some information here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here and I'm going to highlight everything there. And then I'm going to go click on Record Seek. And I wanted to create a source. You see how it filled in everything? Okay. Sometimes it does that, and I have to go do it a second time. You see how it's filled in everything I highlighted? Now I can go add to it, and I'll put in I put in Simeon W. Clay. It's got the website that it came from. Now I'm going to go to next. Right now, I can save now and attach later. Or I can go next, and I can put, tell it I want to search by ID number, and I have Simeon's. Do you know what an ID number is? And family tree. It's the number that follows the name. And I have his number here. I found it. Now I've lost it. K A K four four L H dash N L N. Oh, yes, it is there. K four L H. N L N. Simeon W. Clay, create and attach. Now, if I go to Simeon Clay, it's there. Now, I could have added it to the source box, then gone to Simeon Clay and attached it. If we go here, do you know how to reach your source box? If you go by your name, source box, it would have appeared right there, patent GLO records, and it will have attach on the side, and I could attach it. Now, I like to get, when they are attached, I like to go ahead and get rid of them. So I remove it, remove source, okay. Now I have some others. Now this particular one is a book. I don't want to get rid of that one because I use it frequently and tell what page it's on. So that's your source box. Now we're going to close that and close, oh dear, I got rid of it again. No, home. That's the trouble of doing it live, but you're not going to learn. From screenshots. Reasons. Okay. Was that helpful to you? Okay. One other thing I want to do is I'm going to keep Reuben there. I'll go and tell it to go to tree. Okay, if I click here, I'm going to go to recordseek.com. You see this little green record seek? You just simply take that and drag it up to your bookmark bar and drop it and then it comes out record seek like that. Then you can go hit it. Okay. Now, uh, sourcing, we did that, did that. Okay, I've got a duplicate person in here that needs to be merged. Let's go to four generations. And her name is Nancy Collier, and she's in there twice. And I 
think here she is right here. Now I'm going to right click on person and open in a new link and hope that I don't lose this thing again. Okay, now I can go down here and see if they know that she's in there duplicated and they don't know it. So, and that's frequently the case. But I have her second number. Let's see, make sure I've got the one. LKD4, okay, that's the one. And I want to merge her by LKL1 dash BW1. And hope I copied it right. Nancy Collier and Nancy Powell. Powell is her married name. And whoever put her in did not know that, but you will see that the data is the same. I do not want to change her name because I want her maiden name. And here we've got a new residence, some more source information. See, spouse, Claude Powell, we didn't have that in the other one, and we want to add all of the children. And then we'll go down and we'll hit continue merge. And this is one place I'm a lazy person. I put same person. I don't want to say, they don't have her parents, they have her father only, her, her husband and children only, but these two people are the same people. Now, she has a source here as Powell, as married, but now we've got her parents, her husband, and all of her children where we did not have before. Be very careful in your combining people and make sure that they are the same person. Now, we have uh, up here, we have memories. The overview tells you how to do a lot of things and you have to, before you can add pictures to the memories portion of it, you have to agree that you will use family-friendly information, and they will specifically mention what they don't want. Uh, so this is such an easy thing that I am going to go now to the gallery. I have added over 500 people. Let's see, my memories, it usually gives me a number here but it's loading at 513. Uh, now some of these I've added titles to. They have come up. There are ways to view this. This is clicked on all. You can look at pictures only. You can look at stories only. You can look at documents only. Now I have some things that I've entered in there. Oh, and there's audio recordings. If you have the Memories app on your phone, you can uh, go to a family reunion or see Aunt Minnie and ask you to tell, ask her to tell you a story. You can record it. You can upload that straight to the Memories gallery from your phone. Uh, I know one of Fred's cousins has a wonderful story about uh, an aunt and uncle of his that was looking out and saw their barn was on fire. And they headed down to the barn to put out the fire. And he, while he was getting the horses out, she went over to the pond to get water and noticed that the fish were jumping. Well. 
she picked up the fishing pole and started fishing. <laughs> the husband came out to see what was going with the water, found the fish that she was catching. He picked up another pole and he started fishing. The horses were out of the barn. Uh, well, other brothers and siblings and cousins saw the house was on fire and they came out from town to put the fire out, help them put the fire out and found them fishing. So, this is a wonderful story that would be good to be added. They do suggest that you keep these no longer than two minutes because you do lose interest in it if it goes on. It has the capacity for about five minutes. It's 1.5 meg, but they do not encourage you to make them that long because people lose interest. So you want to keep it interesting. Now, how do you add pictures to this? Well, I'm going to shrink this, and then I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to open up wherever it is. I had it. Nope, it's disappeared. Oh, I fought with this all morning and now it's gone again. Um, well, here is, okay, here is a, a federal land grant for another one of Fred's relatives. Do you see how I just drag it over and this turns into a landing strip? Now that was a document and let's go back to, I'm going to blow this up again. And I'm going to make this to show all. Here it is. Now usually that will, if I come back in a minute, it will be grayed out and it will say reviewing. Now I'm in a minute going to shrink this again. And I know I've got... We've had so much fun this morning, old photos. Okay. You just add. Now, it was one, well I did. Let's see. Patton. Okay. Now, if you save images or documents from Ancestry, you have the option to save it as a PDF or a JPEG or a PDF. Save it as a PDF and it will save you one step. But if you have a photo, a JPEG, that you want to change to a document, if you click, if I click here, I'm going to blow this up now. If I click on this one picture and I want to identify a person in it, then I can blow up that circle to show Paul. I will shrink it down a little bit. but you're going to have a circle. And sometimes it will stay still. Okay. Good. Now, Now I have to add that new, and I had his full name on there. Okay, Paul Koenig. Now I can attach it to the tree. I don't have Paul's PID number, because I had selected a bunch of other things that I left on my computer at home. Uh, but you can go and you can search for Paul Koenig and find him. I think it was Joseph Paul Koenig, but uh, 
Uh, we don't want that. Okay. But you go here and you search for the person. Uh, find in family tree, invalid. Oh, that was put. Okay. That wants their PID number. Find Koenig. Okay. We're going to add, let's see, father, Francis, Paul Joseph Koenig, that's the one. So we'll select him, and now that picture is tied to him in the tree. And if I go to Paul Joseph Koenig, open link in new tab, Paul now has a picture by his name. Now, if there are multiple pictures attached to him, you can click on here and you can go select another picture. If somebody else has put in the picture but you like a different one better, you can select another picture and it will show that way for you, but it will show the other way for the other person. It won't switch it for everybody. Yes, ma'am. I attached it to the gallery. To the gallery. Is that, yeah. is that only a reference number to your hard drive, or is that an actual picture in the program? It's an actual picture online. Online. Okay. Yes. And since Paul is deceased, anyone can see it. Okay. If it is a living person, only the person who put it in can see it. Okay. Uh, I cannot see data for my cousins. Take it one step further. I've added my son to my, my database. He cannot see that. Uh, I have added his wife as a different person. I've added him to her. She can see him. Unless he logs in as her, he still can't see him and he can't find me, so I'm living. Unless we call each other on the internet or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that they are very, to the point I think, overly concerned about privacy. I would love for my son to see me. Now they keep talking about that there are going to be groups that you can give other people permission to see your data, where you can work on your living family as a group. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, but they, they're talking about it. Yes, ma'am. When somebody will have to enter it in. Somebody else has to... Well, yes, you're exactly right. Um, now, for members of the church, when a person dies and the church is notified, the church puts it in. But for the rest of you, you're going to have to give somebody access to your database where they can go in and change it 
or you're going to have to enter duplicate and then merge. But if you're listed as living, uh, it's hard to do. I had a 97-year-old man come into the Family History Center a few weeks ago, and we found that he was duplicated on there. And I tried to merge them. I didn't notice that the person, the other, the duplicate, had him listed as deceased. He's 97, of course he's dead. Well, this man drove to Plano from McKinney. He is a very astute man. And so we wrote the, in there, there is the capability, let me blow this back up, there is the ability when you're in, you see messages right up here? And I showed you how you could find that person. Well, we went to the one that showed him as deceased. We clicked on his name, clicked on the man, and said, option is given to send an email. So we, we wrote him and we said, uh, I'm not dead. I'm alive and kicking. Would you please make me undead? <laughs> so, so that we could merge the two. Now, he hasn't come back, and I haven't heard what happened. But I've gotten a lot of messages, and it'll always show a little number up here if you have a message, and you'll get an email telling you that you have messages. And if I click right here, you can see I've had a number of messages. And not long ago, I got one. Uh, she said, I notice you've sent in information on the tackets. We have a common line. And I said, well, uh, I am, my husband is related to that. It, my husband's aunt married Shelby Tackett. And she wrote back and said, I am great-granddaughter of Shelby Tackett. And so we started talking, and I called her closer relatives, and I think they have connected with her again. So it's kind of fun. We're hoping that she'll come to the family reunion this year. So those messages are pretty good. Uh, now there's so many things. Let me go back to the gallery. When, remember, when you put things in as a JPEG, see how screening? Uh, let's see, was this the one? I can still see it. In pictures, in JPEGs, when you put them in, they come up with the circle to identify. Now, this is a document, and it's not showing all of it for some reason, uh, but if I click on it, and it's not letting me add. When, after these have been reviewed, I get a rectangle that I can move and adjust the size to go over a name and then add a person to it. So uh, maybe we can do that. It is not rocket science. I can do it. So it's, it is simple. It is wonderful to blow it up or to, to shrink it down. Have your pictures on your desktop where you can just drag them across and it turns that memories into a landing strip gallery. Now, fun thing, let me go to people on there. A fun thing here, this puts in alphabetical order the people that you've put in, uh, sort by last name. Uh, so, and if I click on Alpha Slane Bennett, right down at the bottom, it says show relationship. And so it shows my relationship to Alpha Slane Bennett. He is my great-grandfather's half-brother, or brother. Yeah, he's a full brother. Uh, this is fun to find when I've had people uh, that have relatives that are contributing pictures. Well, I've heard that name, but I don't know how I'm related to them. So you click on my, show my relationship, and it'll show you. Now, before we go on, 
Those of you that have your family tree app, let me tell you some things about it. If you'll pull it out, let's bring it up. Now they've made some changes to this in January that it comes up, and I wish you could see it, and I know you can't, and I don't have a dongle, but it comes up in the portrait pedigree. Now I'm going to click on one person, and then it comes up with their details. Then it's got show the spouses, the parents, the sources, all across, pictures, memories. Up in the, now I have an Android. If you have an iPhone, it's at the bottom. There are three little dots up in this upper right corner. And when you click those three little dots, it shows view my relationship, search records, descendants with tasks, view this tree, possible duplicates, refresh person. What it's telling you, you can do 95% on your phone or your tablet that you can do on the computer. You can take a picture and add it to your... Would you like to put your... Oh. Uh, well, I can't do the Android. I can do them. Yeah, this is okay. Never mind. Never mind. That's okay. Do do yours. You've no, got it. That's good. Oh. Never mind. Sorry. Okay. We can't do it. <laughs> okay. Now, if you if you have an iPhone, down at the bottom, it will also show settings. And if you click that settings, you can have multiple screens open at a time that you can change between. It's not there for Android yet. It was supposed to be by the end of March, but we never make the dates. They usually don't give you a date when. And, and by next March, it will probably be there. And they said, well, we didn't say which year, did we? <laughs> so now, if you look on the other side, at the top, it's on Android, bottom on iPhone. There are three little lines. If you click those, right in the middle, there is relatives around me. You can also search from there. And if you click relatives around me, then search for friends or search, we'll see if we have some cousins here if you've got it up and going. It's doing little circles out looking. And I have uh, Mark Harrison, Jim Thornhill, Suzanne Younger, uh, Walter Braun, and Lisa Ross are all relatives. Now if I click, now I'm gonna click Lisa, and we are, I have to put on my glasses because it's very small. We are 14th cousins once removed. <laughs> That's a long way back, folks. And our common ancestor is Margaret Each and William Trot, if the information's correct. You've got some exciting other connections here. Who do we have? You and I are 10th cousins. 10th cousins. There we go. Tony Hansen has now popped up, but it says no relationship. <laughs> okay, another one popped in. Uh, Mary Frances Stevens and I are related. Okay, well this is fun. When we were at Roots Tech, it would go up to 300, and I swear I had 300 relatives at Roots Tech. Uh, we did this at our uh, uh, Family History Center training meeting last time, and I had the uh, director from Richardson come up to Plano, 
and it turned out that she and another person there were third cousins. And they did not know it at all, but they both got kind of excited about it. Now let's see if I've got, if I've covered most things, and I have a duplicate person merge. Now we come down to questions. Anybody got any questions? Yes, ma'am. Can you show where the catalog function is? Oh, oh, there's that. Thank you. That is one thing that uh, that brought up another thing I want to look at. Uh, I've got to get out. Let me go back to here. Actually, I could do it. Just go to search catalog. Okay. Now, if you want to search, give me your county. Montgomery County, Texas. Okay, you see it right there? Yes. You click on it. I did not type United States, Texas, Montgomery. I typed Montgomery, Texas. Do not put in county. It does not work. Now, I'll click enter, and then here are your sources. Uh, I'm a big one on looking at histories, land and property, yeah. probate. There's a book of telegrams. And let's see. Okay, probate minutes, probate records, and that's the county. Okay. You can look at those if you go to a family history center or hopefully upstairs. You can access it. Yeah. I know it's an affiliate library, but I had somebody tell me that they went to an affiliate library and they couldn't get it. So I, I don't know, but if it's got a key above the camera, you have to go to a family history center. Yes, sir? Uh, I know that books, we have over 368,000 books digitized online. Uh, some of those are in copyright, and you have to go to a family history center. You cannot go to the library and look at it. Uh, but these are, now there are some other things that I would like to talk about, and we're just going to go back to family search because it's easier to find it from the home page. Check your county and see what you can access. If we scroll down to the bottom, and right now there is app gallery. There's also the blog. Can I encourage you to look at that? Uh, app gallery. There are things that you can access from site map that you can't access any other way. But we'll go to App Gallery. And there are a number that work with the tree. And right now, I'm going to go down to All Categories. And anytime you see a little tree in the corner like these have, those work with the data from the tree. I'm going to go down to... Uh, Relative Finder is fun. It tells you what famous people you're related to or if Dallas Genealogical is a group and you put in, when you enter into that, uh, join that group. It'll tell you who you're related to within the group. Puzilla is a, a good one. Get started. Uh, sign in. Now this is, uh, well, if I can get it to quit moving around. Uh, this is my pedigree, and if I go to, I'm gonna go to Charles Love, and then I'm gonna say show descendants, 
then it's going to build the descendants of Charles Love for six generations. And somewhere in there is a little blue line that leads back to me. Now, this can show you where there are holes in your family, where you see, this one's pretty well filled out, but you see some people here that you don't know who their descendants are. And usually there's all of their children. This one's pretty well filled out. But I've had some that I found 10 children for one couple and none of them continued the line. Uh, here's one right here. There are none for any of these people. Now, when you see a yellow dot, that means they died 16 or before, so there are probably no children. When you see gray dot, they were born within the last 110 years, and that's a sign to leave them alone. So uh, this is a fun app. Now, go back. Just can't go back there. Okay. Um, go back to other apps. Uh, sign in to family search. Okay. I've signed in. Uh, no. We went back and back and back. App gallery. And I don't know that we're still in all categories. There are 151 apps right now. Another one, the relatives around me is fun, but let's see. Now here's that record seek that I told you about. And then here's Roots Mapper. Get started. And this is only four generations. Let's pump it up to six generations. You get a lot more dots. Now, I will tell you, my mother's parents were both born in Germany. And there's a Grandma's Pie app in there that half of it is red and half of it is blue. My dad's U.S. and my mom is Germany. So my pie is just really half and half. Now I've got a lot of people from Germany, if I can find my mouse, and I'm gonna click right here. And that tells you how many generations they are back. And if I pause on them, you can see the name of the person with their birth and death dates. Now I can do the same thing over here, but I don't have as many because they were spread out and they weren't in one spot as much. Now, I can also blow this up where you can see more detail. Oh, this one I really like. To, I find it uh, very dependable up to eight generations, but when it goes to 10, I've had somebody that was born in the middle of the South Atlantic Ocean. So I think there's a little problem the further you go back. So there are lots of fun apps. Let's see if I can, well, go back. Uh, one other one that I really like is Virtual Pedigree. Let's see if it's, and as you can guess, it's down at the very bottom. Yes, and you have to log in with each one of them. There's also one called uh, Genioperty that is playing Jeopardy with your family names. Yeah that it can be some fun uh, as a family activity. 
and this one's taking a little while. And when it starts loading, you can shove each, well, here it is right there. I can shove each of these back. It's loading. It works much faster on your home internet. But as you go, it will, it keeps loading and it spreads out. And as you pull it back, it shrinks and spreads out this way. You can go up, you can go down. And my son had, uh, my son is not all that interested in this, but when I pull this up, and he's, how far back does this go? <laughs> up and down and back and forth across, he was just fascinated with it. And now he's 32, and I will do just almost anything to get his interest in this. And this is working. So, but you see how it shrinks. You can go up, you can go down. And it keeps going. And, um, and it's fun. Uh, go play with the apps. Now, if we go back, well, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, if we go back, uh, beside help up here, there is uh, getting started, learning center cases, research wiki, and uh, what's new. This deals strictly with what's new on family search. <clears throat> some of those, this is part of the blog, but some of those will show up in the blog and some don't. Uh, and I thought of one other thing that I wanted to show. And then it slipped my mind. Oh, family search. Okay. When you are searching on family search, oh, I know what it was. Let me go back to the tree. When you're searching, when you're in family tree, anytime you're in there, in many different parts, the catalog, there will be this little light bulb down here in the corner. And when you see that, navigating the descendancy view, record hints, research suggestions, data problems, you're going to get a video with instructions. That is Visit the Help Center. That is, uh, we'll go back, navigating the descendancy view. I work basically from the descendancy view and then from there go to people and families. But don't overlook the tree tips. Now I'm going to take you to one other place. Uh, some of you attended Roots Tech, I know because I saw you there, and some of you didn't. Uh, Roots Tech videoed several of their sessions. And if you go to rootstech.org and then scroll down to, oh, okay. It looks like I've lost internet. Um, scroll down to videotaped, then you're going to have Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And when you go to uh, look at all of them, on Wednesday, if you're into DNA, on Wednesday there were four DNA sessions. On Thursday, Friday, and Saturday there was one each. But on Friday there is Robert Carer doing uh, elusive records finding elusive records on family search. And it is 
an excellent presentation. He's in charge of all indexing sessions on Family Search. So it's uh, uh, a good thing. I wish I could bring it up and show. We finally have it. Okay, watch 2018 recorded sessions. Friday, and then right here, finding elusive records at Family Search. And there's Robert Kerr. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. He's a good instructor that I can really recommend this one. Uh, now, back to the tree. Do we have any more questions? Have I made it simple enough? I hope. <clears throat> Question back here, and then I'll get you. Right. Right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes. If you want to know when people have changed things, and I have a friend who recommends that you put a watch on all of your direct line ancestors. Uh, I have a great great grandfather that people keep giving him a mother's name. His mother's name is not known. It's family lore that she was an Indian. We don't know that for sure, but it's been handed down for generations, so we think it's right. But they keep giving her, and they keep inventing new wives for the <laughs> third great-grandfather. So it's, it's really good to put a watch on it. You had some. Right. Um, yes, years ago I put mine on and I will add to it. Uh, direct line, I keep, still keep on my own personal database, but I keep adding to the tree also. Now I can copy, I use Roots Magic, and I can copy from Roots Magic, I can just copy it straight over. I can also copy it from, root, from Family Tree to my database with all of the information there. Uh, you can create a GEDCOM if you have a personal database and you can add it and it will go through and it will analyze and match to see each person. It takes a while to do this, but we had a lady come into the Family History Center and start the process. Uh, mine was already in there, so I've never done it, but that you can certainly it's a possibility to do it. Uh, what it does, there's also one other way that you can do it. And we'll go back to family search. How long? If you go to family tree, right down here is family booklet. And if you want to start out adding Oh, I'm not sure it's going to come up, but you can go to Family Booklet and it can say Start You right there. Get started. Fill in the online version. When it will keep your live people, but when you start going to deceased people, then it will start, and this is a type in name by name, it will start looking for duplicates. And it will say, oh, do you mean this person? And yeah, or no. Yeah. <clears throat>
Father entered them all, but he can't see them unless and until he enters them. But uh, uh, as there's a strong concern about privacy issues, and uh, for that reason, uh, uh, normally, generally, usually, almost always, uh, the general public will not be seeing data on living people. Uh, and unless there is a death date, they are not considered dead until 110 years. At 110 years, so at 110 years, they're considered deceased. But just like I said before, I entered my son and he can't find him in there. So there's this, this very strong privacy. But if you go here, you can get started. If you don't have yours in a database that you can, do you know, I'll know what a JEGCOM is? Yeah, uh, genealogical data communications program that's built into uh, all, all, I don't know any genealogy program that doesn't have it. It's now JEDCOM X, but uh, okay, any more questions? Any more comments? Yes, sir. It will, uh, if you add it to it, um, if you do it by JEDCOM, then it goes and searches for all the deceased people. And it goes name by name looking. And it will bring them up and say, is this the same person for you to look at and say it is. If you want to add person by person, then you can, can tell the program to add that person. It comes up. You'll have... Uh, a duplicate screen where you tell it to add that person. Okay, do it, do it name by name. Yeah, yeah, or you can do, it, it'll come out name by name either way you do it. Okay, any more questions? Okay, then I guess we may be through. Okay, did everybody learn one new thing? Okay, good. i just like to leave everybody learning at least one new thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. That was an outstanding uh, presentation today. Just a reminder, if you didn't sign in on the way in, please sign in on the way out so we know you were here and we can, uh, we can count it up. Have a great rest of your day, folks. This has been a presentation of the Dallas Genealogical Society. If you're already a member, thank you. Your membership dues are supporting this and other society activities. If you're not yet a member, I hope you consider joining. You can become a member for as little as $35 a year, and you can join by going to our website, dallasgenealogy.org, and clicking on the Membership tab.